Hello, everybody! Today we're gonna see how I draw Merman from Masters of the Universe Revelation. Just so you know, there's a coloring book that you can get through Amazon. Just follow the link in my description and you can get a coloring book to show me how you color to how I draw. Okay, pencils first and then Sharpies. So if you don't want to watch the pencil portion of the video where I sketch the entire thing out, look in the description and you find a link that you can click on that will take you to the Sharpie portion of the video. I'll even include one for color. But for those of you that are going to stick around, I'm going to start off with a quick sketch for myself and get us going. I almost said He-Man at the beginning in that intro I said I said he and I stopped it's like masters of the because that's that's what everybody keeps calling it because that's what we first were introduced to right Mas he man's masters of the universe he man and the something like that but the, the point is that's not what this is that's not what this show is anymore so all the people that are complaining and what it's not he man it's not but we have a habit of saying that so I get it but, uh, but yeah, it's no longer He-Man. So that's why I'm also trying to remind myself, say it correctly. A lot of people put a lot of hard work into this. So give them the credit and say it the way it's supposed to be said. So with that being said, over and over again, let's, uh, let's get to drawing. Oh, and you know what? Let's talk about this too. Uh, oof, they announced a lot of toys. So I told myself I was not going to get involved. I was not going to start a whole new series of toys because I, I am already way too invested in other things. I am way too invested in the Black Series. Sorry, I had a phone call, so I had to stop there, but I know what I was talking about. I do remember what I was saying. I uh, am I'm so deep into the Black Series that, and I love it, I'm not complaining, that I told myself I'm not going to do it again. I'm not going to invest in, in you know, a, <laughs> another army of characters because, it, again, there's a Black Series. I started up with G.I. Joe, and I, I know from the history how deep um, the, the Masters of the Universe stuff goes. And as awesome as it is, as much as I want to, I told myself, don't do it. Don't invest. And and I've been pretty good. Uh, I was this close. I mean, I had them in my hands. I was like, ooh. And it's, you know what it is? With, with the pandemic that happened and the lack of availability, as toys would appear, it's like grab them while you can because the only time you're going to see them kind of thing, especially with the Black Series. Man, we had a a heck of a, a battle um, with exclusives and especially with the G.I. Joe stuff and everything anyway so you get into this habit of I found it I better grab it or I'm not going to see it again and um, I came across them and it, it was exactly that I was like oh my gosh I need to grab these I said I wasn't going to but I'm never going to see them again and then I'm going to want them and I'm going to regret it I better grab them while I can. Then I thought it through. I was like, no, put them back. You don't need them. This is fate telling you. Or you, I just talked myself out of it, basically. I don't have to tell you the whole speech. But it was me saying, don't do it. And it's just, it's too much money. I, I can't, I can't spend that much. So I told myself not to do it, and I didn't. I didn't. I didn't get it. But my gosh! Uh, oh, okay. So where I was going with was was so then they announced recently all the new ones that are coming out, and oh my gosh, it was it, they look amazing. They look fantastic. I want to get them, but like I said, I, I, it's too much for a mega collection, you know. And, and I get it. I'm glad some of you can. I'm glad, you know, you, you pick and choose. Like, uh, there's, they're also re-releasing like uh, Ninja Turtles stuff like that. I, I had a whole bunch of those when I was younger, but I don't have nostalgic feelings that I, I need to get them or that kind of thing. But I also don't buy because of nostalgia. 
I don't say, ooh, I had this when I was a kid. Well, I say that. Okay, let me finish that sentence. I was going to say, I don't buy because of nostalgia because I had it when I was a kid, but that's exactly what I'm doing with G.I. Joe. <laughs> I don't have any, any connection to G.I. Joe. Besides, when I was a kid, I bought a few and... And uh, same thing, I didn't buy all of them. It's just a fun thing to buy. It was, it was toys, they were cool, you know, so I bought a whole bunch. And now that I see them, oh, they look really cool. They're look, looking good, I wanna support it. I like it, so I'm buying them now. Again, not because when I was a kid, I collected them, but I did when I was a kid, but because they look good, right? So, when when stuff like you know the Ninja Turtles come out, uh, 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 these new Masters of the Universe, I want to buy them because they look good. I want to own them and collect them and have them. But again, it's like I, I don't need to, so I'm okay with passing it up. And that's what it really comes down to is is uh, um, the word I'm looking for. Uh, being able to control your spending and and talking yourself into do I really need this I mean they're toys we don't need any of it and so that's what I kind of tell myself I was like do I really need this toy it's just gonna sit on a shelf but you know I love modeling and that kind of thing so that's why I respect it, it looks good so little things like that help me decide no I can't I can't buy it I can't get in, give into this because it's too much work as much as I want to do it, I, I'm not going to be able to afford it, you know. Um, so, so it was, it was a little, a little sad that I wasn't going to be able to get anything. But again, I'm okay. It, it was, it was fun while it was, and I appreciated seeing them. And at least I can draw, and that doesn't cost me anything, right? Except paper and pencil. Okay, I think I'm good with the sketch. Um, let me erase some of this. Uh, some of the detail I'll add with the with the um, sharpie portion. But what I want to do is I want I just need my guidelines and not this sketch. Because what I do is when I'm first putting lines down, I'm just throwing lines down. I'm trying to get the placement, the position, and the proportions, and I'm throwing lines down, just trying to find all those. And as I do, as I get more confident with each one of those, I start pressing harder. So when I lightly erase like this, I'm erasing the sketch lines, but keeping my confidence lines. And that's how you live your life. Get rid of your sketchiness, keep your confidence. We'll do amazing things together. And I'll be there to celebrate your victories. All right, because you have the power, just like the masters of the universe, right? Yay. <laughs> okay, so I say we welcome all the skippers and get going. Welcome skippers, welcome to the Sharpie portion of the video. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I do a different drawing every day. You can join along and have some fun. I'm going to be using a Sharpie fine point and a Sharpie pen. Mostly the fine point, but the pen's a little finer than the fine point. It can find things that the fine point can't quite find. I've sketched the entire thing out. I've erased the majority of the sketch lines, but left myself enough to see where we're going to go. And if you want to see more He-Man Masters of the U if you want to see more Masters of the Universe, check out that playlist there, or just do a search in my playlist in general because I do so many drawings. I may have already drawn what you're looking for. So do a search. If not, drop me a request, and I'll see what I can do. All right, I already see it. His head has kind of shifted over a little bit too much, but I think I'm going to go with it. I think I like where it is, so I'm just going to build off of that. So let's draw some of them crazy eyes. He's got these crazy merman eyes but they're kind of round but kind of not right I might have done it too big too but I can live with that so maybe clown eyes is what this kind of makes me think of you know and we'll do like a little pupil type thing like that a little, little fish eye and there'll probably be color around there but that's again more color so I'm gonna build off this. He's got like a little layers of, of almost like a mask type thing. So we're gonna do this. He's got that furrowed brow type thing and then build on that. Okay, so see some kind of strange little pattern design the funny thing is, I always try to make it look 
like real, you know, as, as real as I could get, as if someone was wearing a cosplay costume, right? <laughs> but there is no realness in a fish man, <laughs> you know, there is no, well, this is what a fish man would really look like. <laughs> and that doesn't exist. <laughs> so, you know, I can kind of get away with, well, do what you want, you know? Cool. So now we're gonna draw his angry fish mouth to his, I guess, like a gill, right? He's got little points on the side of his head that we're gonna say are gills, but he also has like little fish lips. And then he's got jagged fish teeth. So let's. like that because that's where his mouth is open but I want his bottom jaw you can see the teeth a little bit better like the full tooth because like the lip is covering up the back the back the back of that tooth so I want the bottom lip to be open a little bit more a little bit uh, more aggressive right like that Like, you know, with, his, with the opening of his mouth, his bottom jaw opens more than the top. And that's his, his aggressive little um, look, right? Okay, so again, uh, like a little fish, wolverine hair type kind of gill thing. Yeah, I think that'll work. And if you notice, I'm starting to thicken up some of these lines because when uh, I switch over to this big Sharpie, you're going to see a huge difference in line width. So I'm trying to match kind of where it's going. And I, I get you may not want to do that because you're working with pencil, but I'm just explaining to you why I draw how I draw. Does that makes sense. Okay, and these are like his, his ear type things, right? Because like I said, as much as it's like a Wolverine type kind of pointy thing, it's, I guess it's like gills. Yeah, that'll work. I'm kind of going back and forth and making sure that I'm following the, the sketch or the whole feel of the look you know it helps if you can look in the mirror of your your picture like look at the re reversed I can't do that I can't take it and go look at a mirror because you know, it's taped down to the board and we're recording right now but um, you know if you ever want a better perspective of whether your work your, your drawing is working go look in the mirror go hold it up to the mirror and see if it still looks the same it, it almost doesn't because you know, we kind of trick ourselves into drawing or looking at it a certain way as it's developing and it's making sense, right? It's like, okay, this is working, this is working, it's making sense. And if you go and look in the mirror, it might not be, you might look in the mirror, oh, wait a minute, that's, that's not right, that doesn't work because you're looking at it from a different point of view. So it really helps to do stuff like that. All right, I'm gonna switch over to the other Sharpie because I'm good with the tiny detail. It's time for the big detail. Now he's wearing this this armored, um, like what do you call it, uh, coral reef type kind of thing. So I'm just gonna add some spikes of stuff as I'm going to my sketch, and that's why I said earlier in the sketch too that I'll let the rest uh, be taken care of with color. And I'm gonna move him over just a little bit. I'm gonna add his little opal diamond thing, whatever that is. Um, in the center I had it shifted just a little bit so I'm just moving it over and so now I'm gonna kind of um, build on that but see how thick this is compared to that that's what I'm talking about that's why I tried to match where it was gonna go And 
so that's see what that's what this is just like this sprawling uh, what do you call it um da -da -da -da, coral reef type kind of um, almost like barbed wire type kind of feel you know um, let's see and it's going this way it's gonna come out like that behind this this one is going back this way here. Now I was just trying to plan what's behind what so I can I can get a whole feel for the entire thing of what's in front of stuff and what's behind. To draw like the, the, you know, the expanse uh, feel of it, right? Do the same thing with this. We'll kind of come out. Because it's got like this this regal like spread of of armor that I'm trying to capture as well, like a big shoulder pad type kind of thing, you know? Let's draw like a gill type kind of thing on it. Something like that for his neck. Big old fish man neck. Okay, so for that armor, there are like pieces that I kind of want to do first. So let me follow the, the design that I sketched to draw it first again. So it's, it's there and I don't th draw through it when I get to the other parts, right? Good. So this is the edge of the armor. So now it can come through like that. And that's mainly why I want to draw some of this stuff first is just so I know how far I can go, where my stop points are, <laughs> and try not to cross that line. It happens. And I'm just going to clean it up. But try not to. Try to stop before you get there, right? Let's do that. Let's kind of add a little bit of extra line just to give it some detail because the other down um, how much it's it's a thick sharpie I want I want some tiny detail to en en enhance it but uh, but yeah I guess enhance it right let me add a few of these here and this I know I'm just sketching but I'm doing it first like I said or, or not sketching but I'm throwing them randomly out there but I'm doing it first so I know where the edges are and then I can draw to it Start stop points. Start stop. You can start here, stop there. Right? So planning. That's what it's all about, you know? So same thing. Let me do some of these little spiky little uh what, what did I say they were? Oh my gosh, you might see an old man who doesn't remember things. But again, I know where where I'm gonna go. All right. Like a coral, like a coral, spiky coral reef type kind of thing, right? There we go. So I think that's good for that. So now I can basically draw his muscles and the rest of the armor coming down. He's a little hunched over. He's in that, that fighting position. So let me draw his armor to his waist and then we can build out from there. Um, again, he's a little hunched over. So let me kind of place those pieces where they're supposed to be and then draw the belt, right? I'll add some more detail in a second. I just wanted to to uh, um, work those through. There we go. Now again, those should be more spread out, but I've got him kind of hunched over in this menacing 
uh, what would you call it? Um, um, battle, battle position, battle stance. There you go. He's in a, 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 a compressed battle stance. If this is his, his waist, he's like this, all ready to like coming at you, like her, you know, that kind of thing. Think of it that way. Think of him going her, right? Her, matey. Uh, he suddenly became a pirate. I mean, it's 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 mm, you know what it was it not nautical. So mm, okay, I can buy it. But I'm also just trying to convince you that I'm not crazy. There's a reason I'm making pirate sounds. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. All right. Okay. This is cool coral belt. Alright, you know what? Let's go ahead and do the rest of the belt since I'm here. I'm going to bring it down like this, come up this way. And because you can't see as much of it because of the way it's kind of covered up by his stance, that's why I want to go ahead and just do it. And also that'll give us, again, start stop points for the rest of the armor that we're going to be drawing. Or his body, right? Not the armor, his body. That is behind the armor, was what I was trying to say. All right, here we go. So now I can just draw musculature. So we're gonna draw his waist to his ribs. Again, he's kind of hunched over. You can kind of see it here, but because of his positioning, not so much. And then, um, let's see, the arm's gonna come through like that. He's got a lot of muscles, like, you know, everybody in, in Eternia does. They all have, you know, massive gym memberships. So they all have a lot of muscles going on. So that's, that's where I'm going to do that. And then uh, his pecs, you can't really see either because of the way they are covered up. But we got his chest. So now we're gonna draw arms. So think of it this way. There's the chest up to the arms. The arms are coming out menacing like this. So I was gonna put his shoulder right about here to the bicep coming into his arm. That would make the back of it here. That's gonna come through that again, there's the shoulder bicep like this to the elbow. Then to the forearm, which has got, he's got like these pointy ends uh, uh, on the end. Very Wolverine, very Wolverine on the ends of his, like, I guess we'd call it a glove. Um, so I'm gonna come out here like this, seal it off right here. I'm gonna do his forearm to his, uh, I'm sorry, the bicep to his forearm, and continue it here. Come in here to accent that it's a gigantic muscle to his wrist. So there's the other part right there. Connect it out here like this to make it a little more accented, a little more exaggerated that it's, it's a, uh, um, you know, this gigantic looking uh, accented piece, right? And I, I always say this, I want to draw muscles. I want to draw a whole bunch, but because they're muscles, they're kind of, you know, a little, a little smoother than a hard edge. So I like to try to keep myself grounded, right? Okay, hand, we're just going to do in a fist like this. So let's draw the back of it here. All right, here's the knuckle. Going up to the fingers. That means the pinky. Oh, you know, I should probably do the thumb work my way back. All right. So this finger is kind of covered up. That's all you can see. This one's wrapped around like this. This one you can start to see more of. Do that. See the pinky here. It's going to wrap around into itself, tucked in, and that's that part of the hand. I know it's very vague, uh, but I'm going to add some more details to sharpen. What I like to do is draw. Oh, you know what? I don't think he has four fingers. That's my mistake. Sorry. But we're just going to keep it like it is. We're going to keep going. I like to draw that, like the like the very hyper extended, uh, whatever that is right there, just to kind of show the the, uh, 
the strength of his grip, you know? Okay. This one is gonna be out like this. And it's supposed to be three fingers. Uh, maybe I should make it four since I did that one over there. You know, so I, I guess, there you go. We're gonna intentionally draw it wrong. Let's do that. So the shoulders here, again, come down to the bicep, down to the uh, crook of the arm, just like we did over here, pretty much. All right, and then I'm gonna close it off to give myself a, a position. Then I'll go ahead and draw the back of his arm into the uh, elbow, forearm like that. Accent some of those muscles. All right. Sometimes it's a little too thin. Okay. Now this one again, like I said, we're gonna do it like this now, but I wanna accent this big old huge piece into his hand. Okay, so yeah, let's do, I, I'm gonna try to make it into four. Like I said, I know it's gonna be wrong, but let's just work with it. You're welcome to not draw one of these fingers to draw it correctly. And it's, it's just pretty much that, you know, just a, a gigantic uh, um, striking hand, you know, like palm, palm strike. That's kind of what I'm looking at or thinking. Okay, so let's draw some of these lines. And I, I try not to draw too many, but I end up drawing too many anyway. So I apologize if it doesn't quite work out, but I'm going to try to make it a little reasonable and understandable. But the nice thing is there are the palm lines, you know, so we can kind of get away with, you know, a little extra. It's fine. And plus, you can kind of say, well, that's the glove, you know? All right, I'm good with that. I'm good with that. That's a gigantic hand. That's a lot bigger than I expected, but hey, <laughs> All right, so he's got like seaweed, I guess is what that is for for a, a loincloth. So I'm just gonna draw some of the rags looking look. The rag looking look. That's that's how articulate my speech pattern is, or my brain. That's that's how well my brain works, which is not well at all. It's the, 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 what did I say? The, the seaweed looking look. All right, there we go. Not much to it. But again, it's seaweed, so. It's really gonna be about color. Good. So now, again, just muscular legs, big old strong muscular legs. So it, his, his, his crotch is in here, so his legs coming through like this, a big old strong legs. Oh, yeah, like I said, everybody in Eternia has a gym membership and really works out. It's almost like it's a contest, right? It's like each, each one of them is trying to get bigger than the other one. So they all keep you know, doing the weights and maxing their gains, all those words, you know? Let's see, that's gonna come over here. Here's his, his uh, what do you call it, the calf. But see how I drew that first? Because I wanted that from the front. I didn't want to accidentally draw through it. So again, 
always try to plan your drawing, at least if you're using a Sharpie. If you're using a pencil, you can always erase. I can't, so, you know, I, I have to plan, but it really helps out because um, it helps me with where I want to go, right? Foot pointed at you, but he's got them, them spiky toes, so let me draw the toes first. Because, again, I want them in front of the toes. Right? So I want to be able to draw it around like that and uh, make sure I get it right. here this one is bent but I gotta remember to draw what I was gonna do there so I'm gonna draw I'm gonna start down here because I know where it's gonna go but again it's because I planned it I, you know I, I sketched out where all this was gonna be so I can just pretty much just trace around my drawing. Inking is what we call it in the comic industry. I say we like I'm a comic artist, but I'm not. I tried to be. I uh, did a comic, my own. Maybe I'll post it here one day. But uh, we prefer not to call it tracing, we call it inking. All right, let me draw the foot, then I'll add a little detail, and, and then we'll be done. Here's the heel to the toe. His points, I mean, because at this point, are there toenails or are they like talons? Like, what, what is it at this point on the feet, you know? We'll just do like something like this and do that. So there you go. I say we take care of the rest with color. So that is Merman from Masters of the Universe. So here's how I colored it. Tell me what you think in the comments below or show me what you did in our Discord group. Just have fun and make it your own because remember, this is how I draw. You draw how you draw and we'll meet somewhere in between. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe for more adventures with How I Draw. Plus, don't forget to hit that notification button for new videos.